So stress measurement techniques, some of these we'll go into more depth in the future, but just an idea. Remember, we need to fully characterize the stress field, we need the magnitude of the three principal stresses in one of the horizontal directions. So how do we get those? Well, the vertical one is the easiest. The vertical one, we can integrate density logs, or we can just use those rule of thumbs and get us pretty close. The other two are not so easy. Um, the minimum principal stress, which is SH min, except in reverse faulting, can be obtained through mini fracks, mini fracks or leak off tests. So we'll talk about these in more detail later. Uh, but a mini frac or leak off test or DFIT, diagnostic fracture injection test, are tests that you do typically while drilling. You, so you pause drilling operations for, for a while. And then you would do these tests where you actually propagate small hydraulic fractures, not for stimulation, uh, not for stimulation, but strictly for diagnostics. Um, because you may, you know, as you drill, you want to have a, a good picture of what the stress field looks like, and that will help you make decisions about whether your well-designed plan needs to be modified in terms of where you're going to set casing, if, do you need to deviate the well, whatever. So you would do these diagnostic tests where you actually produce small hydraulic fractures and then interpret that data to interpret the, the minimum principal stress. Um, pore pressure can be measured directly. Uh, there are tools that can do this. You can, you can just measure from, uh, from the drill string, from the bottom hole assembly, the, the pore pressure, or from casing. Um, <coughs> or it can be estimated from geophysical logs or seismic data. Um, assuming we know the minimum, right? Assuming we know SH min somehow, possibly from one of these tests, we can bound SH max. So SH max is the hardest one to measure. But we can bound it <coughs> a couple of different ways. One way is with this idea of a critically stressed uh, stress crust, which we'll talk more about, or this idea that it, here the idea is that you know the whole Earth is in compression due to tectonic motion. Most of the crust is in compression, and eventually, you know, the rock has a finite strength. So eventually, if you press on it so much, it's going to fail. Right? It's going to fail. And so the entire surface of the earth is covered in failures. We call them faults. Right? And those faults will eventually slip if continue to stress. So this idea is one that says that if we know the minimum, stre the minimum stress and we know the strength of the rock, then we can bound the maximum stress based on that. Because if the difference between the minimum and maximum can only be, you know, according to some constitutive law, can only be so large, and then we're going to fail the earth or we're going to cause the, any existing faults to slip. So it's very hard to measure SH max, but we can often get an upper bound on what it would be. Uh, another thing is uh, via wellbore failure. So we talked about this a little bit, or we looked at a picture of this, uh, I think, on the first day of class, the first lecture. You know, we drill a hole in the earth. The hole is originally circular. But eventually, when you get to some depth um, where the stress field is great enough, then you begin to get breakouts. So virtually every well bore anywhere in the world has breakouts. And those breakouts occur, um, the breakouts occur, as we'll see soon, in I should say they, they occur in vertical wells um, at the azimuth of SH min, at the azimuth of the minimum principal stress. But we can use uh, well logging tools like calipers to actually measure the profile of those breakouts. And we'll see some of this data soon. Um, but if we have a, an idea of the profile, the real profile of the breakouts, then we can use some computational model. These are, these are typically pretty complex models that you'd have to run you know, like a finite element analysis on, if you know what that is. But um, if, with a, an advanced constitutive model, and you can sort of solve an inverse problem. Right? So you don't, here we, we know what the final result is, 
because we measure it. And we try to, and, and then we have some idea of the constituent response of the rock. Uh, and so then we try to uh, you know, reverse engineer or solve for or figure out what the far field stresses are. And then, of course, if we can measure one of them from a mini frac, the minimum, then it makes it even easier, right? So then we're just looking for one thing, right? We know that we know one of the far field stresses. We know the strength of the rock. We have a comp we know the, the profile of the bro breakouts. And then we can just sort of solve an inverse problem to try to figure out what that other missing component is, that missing boundary condition or stress is. Uh, and so that's another way, uh, one of the better ways to, uh, to get SH max. Um, and then, of course, the orientation of uh, principal stresses from well bore observations. Again, if you have breakouts, and almost all wells do, in a vertical well, they're gonna, the breakouts are going to appear at the azimuth of SH min, and we'll uh, see why that is in a few weeks when we talk about well bore mechanics. So that alone, observations of well bore breakouts, will give us some idea of one of the principal horizontal directions. Um, there are other ways you can use this knowledge of the geology or earthquake focal mechanisms. These are not as accurate um, as direct observations of the well bore. But of course, direct, you know, that, that implies you have to drill a hole. And a lot of times you really want to know this information before you drill the hole so that you can plan your well. So 